Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Hey, you guys are a little awake. Awesome. You guys feel free. Finish your conversations up. Don't, don't mind me. I'm not that important up here. Uh, grab some coffee, coffee in the back there. Uh, that is the Holy Spirit. That's how, uh, that's how we get through the day here. Whatever. You guys, you guys this on the coffee, whatever. You guys, you guys be tired, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're so excited you're here. Uh, if this is your first time, please, there's a Connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you, or you can fill one out online. Um, if you would, would, would you just fill that out for us? That's just a way that we can connect with you. Um, if you go over there and see, is that Paige over there, I think? Yeah, so that's Paige at the Hub. She's even getting your gifts ready for you. Um, so if you just fill one of those out, we would just love to connect with you. That's just a way we can... Know that you're worshiping with us. You can learn more about us. We can learn more about you. Um, things like that. So we would just love for you to uh, just fill that out. Take a minute. Um, that would be great. Also, our offering is in the back. We won't be passing around the bucket because y'all have cooties. Uh, so, so it's in the back. <laughs> that little table back there with the with the logo on it. Um, it that's just a way. If you're if this is your first time, don't feel the need to. That's just for our family. It's just another way that we can worship. Um, so that is in the back. Whenever you guys leave, you can uh, feel free to drop that in the back there. You guys still awake? Yeah. It seems like you're falling asleep already. It's because they don't have that Holy Spirit coffee in the back. <laughs> How many of you guys have kept your uh, New Year's resolution so far? Did, did anybody have a New Year's resolution? No. Not even one person. What is it, Crystal? We would love to hear it. To exercise. Hey, everybody give Crystal a hand. Take a, take a bow. <laughs> so my, my like sem, semi-resolution this year, it wasn't really a resolution, it's more just a goal, but uh, is to read a book every, every month this, this year. Um, and it's not that cute, it's just a book. <laughs> I'm just trying to get smarter. <laughs> That's it. That's it. But anyway, so I was reading this, this book that I'm reading right now, um, and I was just... The past two books that, I, that I've read have both been like self-help kind of, kind of books, and it's interesting to me that at the beginning of every one of those books, the person has to like verify themselves. Like they have to tell their life story or something to like give themselves credentials. Uh, before they tell you how you should change your life, they can say, look, I've already done it in mine. But they have to give you the credentials first. Um, and I was just thinking this week of how in our lives we, we don't need those credentials, especially walking into, into this building. I feel like so many times, though, we can get in this spot where we feel like walking in here, like we're not, God doesn't want our worship. You, you don't know the life that I'm living, um, you, know, you know, things of that sort. But in, in Galatians, it says that if, if you can obtain righteousness through the law and, and through your works, then what Christ did was for no reason. Um, and, he, and he died for you, and, for, and it was his blood that made you worthy. So I don't know what you're going through today, what you walked in here with, but this is the place you're supposed to be. Jesus wants you here, and he wants your worship today. So if you could, if you guys want to just want to stand up, say hi to somebody, grab your coffee, and let's worship. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Did everybody come here today ready for worship? I thought you were raising your hand. I was really excited. You're just <laughs> waving to somebody. <laughs> well, we are going to come before the Lord today just in a posture and position of just like being expectant, just ready to see what he wants to do, how he wants to move, all for his glory. So let's sing this out this morning. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's word as he walks into the room where people pray.
In Revelation, when the Lord is calling out the churches, he says, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. And that is not what I want the Lord to say about this church. I do not want to have a reputation for being alive and then be dead inside. We did not come here today to be dead inside. We have a Lord who moves. We have a God who is in control over all, sovereign over all, over your life, over our nation, over this town, over the world, over this church, over everything. We have no excuse, no excuse to not come before him today and offer everything, to pour it out to him, to give him all the glory, all the praise. He is worthy. He is in control. We are not going to be dead this morning. We are going to sing this out to him.
in Psalm 91, it says, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. And then in Psalm 118, it says, I will confess, praise, and give thanks to you. For you have heard and answered me, and you have become my salvation and my deliverer. Jesus rescued us from this world by offering himself as a sacrifice. God's plan was that each and every one of us would experience that rescue. And when you truly just, when I just sit back and, and truly try to think about that and reflect on his obedience, his sacrifice, I don't know about you, but just I, just this extreme desire to just worship him, to give joy back to him, to find your joy in him, just washes over me. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the person next to you is thinking. Man, when you align yourself to him and shift your perspective to him, you're going to let that wash over you. You're going to let those feelings wash over you because he's making them new. And when you just come before him with just an open arms and open heart, you're going to let him come in the way that he wants to because he is love. He showed that for what he did on the cross. So my prayer for you this morning, and I really just encourage you to just truly think about that. He would do it again a thousand times for you, a million times for you, so that you could be called his children. Can I let that resonate with your hearts for a second? And God, we come to you with open arms, open hearts, knowing that when we call upon you, you are our rescuer, you are our deliverer. Lord, come and move in this place.
Sing this to him. In my whole life, I place in your hands, God of mercy, humbled I bow down. In your presence, at your throne, and I call you answer. Coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. Coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. Coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. Coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love.
Let's go. 
And we'll shout to the whole world, hears it. And we'll sing to the whole world, knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is faithful. Come on, they can't hear you. Cause we'll shout to the whole world.
Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you that what you said will be. What you said will be, no matter what we encounter, your truth is in your word. What you said will be, and it will come to pass. Mm. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid. What you said will be. We find our faith, we find our hope, we find our peace in you, Father. When we fix our eyes on you, help us not to lose sight of you, God. Oh, we love you, and it's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Thank goodness. Wow. My soul. Hey, can we just uh, thank God for Kids Point today? It's been 72 weeks <laughs> since they've been able to gather together, and I love it so long. I'm so thankful that we get to have Kids Point today, and uh, every parent said amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm just thankful for, I'm thankful for that. Listen, um, this place just feels a little bit electric today. Do you feel that same thing happening in this place today? And I think, um, I, you know, I don't know what, how or what you came in the doors with today after uh, the way that this year has started, you know, um, but to me, this is like, this is a place, this is a sense of like relief, and we have to get our focus and our mind centered um, where it needs to be on worship, and uh, that's what this is today, and, and that's really, you know, the, that's the, the biggest point of what we're going to do and what we're going to be about today. We're not going to focus on anything else. We're not going to focus on any other thing other than the fact that, um, uh, and my mind just keeps racing over the lyrics of this song, um, but I'm not very good with lyrics. So, um, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking stand. Like, that's where my mind goes today, because everything else feels like it's shifting and moving, but you don't have to move like that. You ju you, we, we can be constant and secure and safe, and, uh, and all of our focus pointed in the direction of Christ um, that, that's our hope, man. That's our constant. That's our consistency. That's where we need to be found. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. All right. So listen, I, I, we have like some serious good stuff to do and to talk about today. M my point in our, in our message today is why do we worship? Um, I don't know that you've ever asked that question, but I, it's, it's become like peculiar to me because, you know, as, as we, as we sit in here, as, like my wife and I, as we are here and we worship every Sunday and, and this is, this is home to us. This is comfortable. This is just a living room, and you're just kind of, that's why we always tell you, make yourself at home, because you're just at home. And, and so we feel innately comfortable here, but it, 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 um, I have to scratch my head sometimes because I wonder, like, the person that's brand new to our church or brand new to faith, like, what do they feel and experience when they come into our home? Because it can feel quite awkward, you know? When, you know, especially somebody who's like brand new to church and, and they come in and they're like, we're doing a sing-along today, you know, what is this? This is karaoke. What, is, what are we doing? You know, this is just weird. And why do we worship? Why, why do we do this? Why are there some people in here that lose their dang minds? And then there's some other people. You know what I'm saying? Why do we worship the way we worship? We're going to cover that today, but the most important thing I wanted to cover today was a few more pastoral pickup lines. Because here's what happened. Let me tell you what happened. Like Aaron Feather stood on this stage and made fun of me. Yeah. Didn't he? And then Monday he starts texting me all these one-liners. <laughs> so these are from Aaron. He says this. He just, just randomly sends me this text message. And it says this. How many times do I need to walk around you before you fall for me? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> like, that's all he sends me. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. This was like a day later. So my mind is like way past. I don't even remember what manner of man I am on Monday, right? I don't, I don't remember what I preached, nothing. And he sends me this text. And I was like, Aaron, we need to talk, right? <laughs> and then he says, it. he says, oh, I just Googled one-liners. I'm like, it was that connected to you that you went home and Googled this? Okay. He says, the next one, I'm just like Noah. I like to do things in pairs. You want to join me? <laughs> oh, it gets worse. 
Here's this third one. I'm not a miracle worker. I only have enough bread and fish for you and I. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is way corny. I'm sorry. I promise we do have some good stuff to get to today. Um, as we started last week, we, we are doing this series about who we are as Grand Point Church. I want to unveil the DNA of who we are, why we exist, what we, why we do what we do. And I think most importantly, I want to connect you and introduce you to some of our staff and some of our lead volunteers who are part of our church. So last week we talked to uh, Ashley, who leads our Kids Point, and Scott, who leads our youth, youth Point, Youth Ministry. How was it, Scott, first Wednesday of the year? It was fantastic. You guys had how many kids were here? 26 kids that were here. Listen, let me just remind you, every Wednesday night, yeah. every Wednesday night, right here in this campus, our youth ministry is going to meet in... Yeah, youth, it's fantastic. I, I love the life change that's going to happen here. So what, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to introduce you to our worship, uh, worship team, worship ministry. So I've asked Andrea and Amanda are both going to come up here, and we're going to do a bit of an interview. And, and so um, I have to just tell you that, um, again, some of these questions that I'm going to ask, they don't really know that I'm going to ask them. Why are you all, like, afraid? Get up here in the light. Like, get up, get up here. Um, but I have to ask, like, so Andrea is our, our hired worship leader for our campus. And so when, when we were beginning the process of this ship campus years ago, 2017, 17, mm -hmm. um, you were not working at the church at the time. You, that was your yeah. interim period, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so she worked at our church beforehand, and then she decided to quit, I mean, because she was having a baby and what all. Mm -hmm. um, and then... And then uh, I don't know that you had plans to ever do this again, but so we, uh, I, I, when I was conceptualizing, like, who's the best person to fit this role? I mean, you were the first person I thought of, and I remember the conversation because it almost became like an, a negotiation, right? And so some of you don't know this, but you watch Andrea with no shoes on sometimes, right? Like Amanda today, but Andrea has these, like, Came you know, you, you brought your steps with you, yeah. right? I get it. I get it. But like the first negotiating thing, do I have to wear shoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it. Like it was like the no, if I have to wear shoes, then I'm not sure I can work there. <laughs> okay. We're, we're already with this. Listen, I, yeah. there's, a, there's a story behind this, and, and I love it. But um, I just, what you see is what you get with her all the time. Can I get a witness? Amen. Like this girl worships here just like she worships, worships at home. This is not a fabricated thing. And, and I love the way that you have led our church. I love the way that you have led our people. Because what you're seeing in Amanda now is a pour out of what Andrea has, has been doing. And, and our whole team is that way. So I want to ask you guys, uh, and you guys can take these however you want. But what really is true worship to you? Oh, man. In, in regards no, to singing, correct, really. sir? Yeah, this is all about worshiping with our voices. Hmm. Just know I still have to speak for a few minutes, so. Say it again. Right, but I just meant we ascribe to the Lord. We worship the Lord yeah. all day. So, but in, in the avenue and vessel of praise, um, whether it be instrument or voice, what is true worship? What is true worship? What does it well, look like for you? In spirit and truth, right? Um, so I, I, I'll tell you, I, I don't know what uh, opinion you have of me, but when I first became... Uh, a Christian, I s told the Lord that I didn't want to sing Christian music. Um, and then when I did, I started to, thank you, Jesus, um, I was like this back, you know, in the back of the stage. And it it's, it's been a 13-year journey, a long time. Um, so I say spirit and truth because um, I had to have a relationship with the Lord. I had to have a conversation with the Lord every day. Um, so it's just gaining wisdom and understanding of the Holy Spirit and um, what that means to now, you know, the presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant back in the day. Um, now, because we're people that live on the other side of the resurrection, right? Um, Jesus is right here. I've made my heart a home mm -hmm. from, from that decision, saying that he is Lord um, and uh, putting my complete trust and faith in him. Um, so the love for me comes after the trust. I can't really love and adore somebody that I don't trust and fully believe in and uh, know that is sovereign and know that is Lord. So um, if you're not a reader, start reading because it really is learning about the word of God mm -hmm. and communing with him 
um, just as what what was that quote that you know how weird would it be for a husband to never tell his wife that he is dear? How weird would it be for a mother that's you know holding her infant child that's on her breast to not just be like completely smitten with this with this being and and show them love and, and to touch them and to kiss them? How weird is it then for a man who says they believe in Jesus Christ to not tell them that he adores them and to do that with our lips or do that with our hands? Um, you know, wh whatever it may be, or do that with our feet. Um, any way that is expressing and giving him honor and glory due with our lives. Corporately, yes, absolutely. They're both in there. Us doing that together as the church, the body of Christ, and absolutely in the secret place with him on our own. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, for me, there's a quote, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, um, you know, the words of the mouth are the outcrying of the heart. Mm. And for me, that's like worship is just literally like you have all this gratitude and all these feelings and, and all this joy. And it's like you just get to a point where if you bottle it up, like what good is it? And I just like, you know, how how could we like I said this morning, like how could we see him on the cross and and know that he has done all of these things and and that, you know, one of my favorite things is like, if I tell a little white lie today, that also nailed him to the cross, no matter how small it is. But he's not looking, being like, well, really? Like, that's kind of trivial. Like, how dare you tell a lie? And I just, like, when he was on the cross, he knew I was going to do that. And yet he still chose to just suffer and, and be tortured and just go through that because he loves us. And one of my favorite songs says, um, you know, oh, God. I can't even think of it. Um, on Calvary, you looked at me. And yeah. I just constantly find myself going back to those words when I'm worshiping. Just this is the outcry of my heart. This is, you know, I just have to give back to the, the giver of everything. Yeah. Like every good thing comes from him. And so we have no choice but to just pour that back. Amen. And, um, yeah. Let me, let me ask you this, Amanda. Like what do you feel is accomplished in worship? What did we just take care of here this uh, morning? Man. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like it, it It brings, I mean, Rich was talking this morning about just like onto, onto Jesus, like just keeping our focus and everything onto Jesus. It's so easy to just be consumed by everything around us and to just see what's going on in the world and what's going on in our lives. And I feel like whenever we really just truly and genuinely come before Jesus in worship, we're like called back to that. And so the focus goes away from, it's not even like, God, thank you. I'm worshiping you because you did this for me. And I'm doing it because I got something in well, return. It makes it about us it's, at that point. Yeah, it, that makes it about us. And so it's, it's also like, I'm worshiping you because that's what I'm created to do. I'm worshiping you because you are great. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't send Jesus to die on the cross, you're still worthy of my praise. And so, yeah. Wow. That's huge. So I told you the other day I was going to ask you, what frustrates you about worship? Before I answer that, though, can I just piggyback oh, what your question to her? I suppose. Because it, it, it's a, and I want to say this because from you talking to Pastor Chris as well, he said this as well, that it is a cost. Mm. Yeah, we'll dive into that in a few okay. minutes. Okay. We, you were going to touch I'm, on that? I'm going okay. There. What frustrates me? How long do you have? Um, <laughs> one of the biggest things, I think, is um, the consumer Americanized yeah. thing about it. You know, the way we, you know, you mentioned like what, what happens if someone who is new to the faith or has no, you know, they're not open-minded to the faith at all, but yet they're here or they're returning to Christ, or, or, or never been to a church like this, whatever, the endless things, you know, we're worried about what, what are they going to think, is it going to be awkward, and then I'm just like, well, what's happening in countries all over the world, you know, you mentioned these countries mm -hmm. last week that are meeting in secret, you know, at first I was like, man, if they got to walk up in here, they would be crazy, but then I'm like, I don't know, they'd be so afraid, maybe they'd be afraid yeah, yeah. To that, am I really this free mm. to worship you, Good question. and we are, and yet, you know, we're afraid to say, I, I was thinking about this, like, 
if someone was like, you know, do you love Jesus Christ? You know, you hear all those stupid things. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They make fun of it, you know. You know, if we are embarrassed and ashamed to say that, um, shame on us, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. or, or I would guess I would put, uh, pose a question to myself of, do I truly believe this then? Yeah. If, there, if there's shame there and if perfect love casts out all fear and if I'm white as snow because of this great exchange, I need to be digging a little bit more. I, I need to ask some more questions. I need to, you know, meet and wrestle with you more. Um, so I guess, does that kind of answer? Yeah, I mean, so. you know my feelings on that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, or the whole, oh, gosh, I hope I don't put any of you on the spot. Know that if I do, I do it out of love because iron sharpens iron. The, well, I just don't worship. I just don't partake in that part. Okay. Well, you're going to worship somehow. You're going to worship the Steelers or the Seahawks who's ever getting the touchdown. Or, you know, you're, you're, you are worshiping and you are giving honor and you are vocalizing in some sense. You know, there's even the, well, I don't sing well. Do you think he cares? Is, is that like, you know, I, and I get it, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but that is, it is, I get the difference in that. Well, you actually want to do this. Like, you, you can carry a tune. You know, this is what you wanted to do your whole life. But really, if you think about it, and if you dig into the word, this is a command. It is not a choice. And I don't say even command with, like, a weightiness of, like, you better do this. You know, because obviously, if you know the Lord at all, that's not how he is, and that's not how he approaches us because of Jesus. Amen. But... I don't know. It's just, it's like, you know, your statutes are my heritage forever. I love to keep your decrees. Again, when when you read those things, those commands, they're not a burden. They're, they're joy and they're an honor. So it is an honor for me to, to, to extend this cost to you, whatever it looks like. Pouring the oil out. I don't care how expensive it is. I don't care how much I'm clutching onto this. I will pour it out because I've seen your faithfulness, because I know your nature. Amen. So there's the truth aspect so of that. So one question for the both of you, because I think you'll have different perspectives, but why do you do this? Like for you, why, why do you choose to work here? And then Amanda, why do you choose to lead worship like this? I just want to also piggyback off of something she said just for the last question. Um, I just, like we sang that song, Getting Ready, and this is literally what we're going to be spending all of eternity doing. So, like, consider it practice, right? Yeah. This is, I mean, we're just prepping ourselves, like, literally practice, everything right? that you read, you know, <laughs> of, you know, in the Bible about what heaven looks like. It always, you know, is everyone is singing holy, 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 and, you know, yeah. just constantly singing. So, yeah, that's, but, and then that kind of, you know, leads into that. Just, um, you know, I just, I've always felt that the Lord was pulling me. Um, obviously I, I love music, but it goes much deeper than that. You know, it used to be, you know, I just like how you started out, you know, you just start out because you're like, I like, I love, I like singing. So, you know, it just makes sense. You know, it's an opportunity to sing. So you sing and, um, and the Lord has just been so transformative in this whole process. Like, you know, coming from, you know, it almost feeling kind of performancey and, and then, and then you just come and you have that moment and like, oh man. Like, I can distinctly remember a United one time. I was just, like, up singing, and then all of a sudden, the, like, a song I had sung, like, a million times, and the Lord just broke me. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, and it happened the other day in the car. I'm, like, singing, and, my, and I'm, like, shaking my head. And my husband's, like, what, what? Did I do something <laughs> wrong? I was, like, no. Like, this song just hit me. Yeah. Like, I've listened to it a bajillion times. And, and, um, and so that's why. I mean, it's just, like, it's an opportunity to, you know, and it, it is also just the coolest thing to just, like, look out and see everybody else worship, and it's so humbling mm -hmm. to be like, oh, my goodness, you know, I am nothing. I am a, a, a peg in, in all of this, where if, if Amanda Carey did not lead worship anymore, nothing, it would go on. Like, it's not about me, and it's, but it's just so cool and so humbling to just be a part of that and yeah. just have, <laughs> man, I've just, some of the best faith moments, some of the best uh, relationship moments that I've had with the Lord have come from being up here and worshiping yeah. and Amen. just, yeah. That something to you for sure. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> so interesting. My Gracie girl asked me this a couple weeks ago and it took me a while to answer it. Um, 
why do I do this? Why do I work here? Um, one of the biggest reasons is because, wow, when your life <laughs> is changed and flipped upside down and you get to almost, sometimes it's like, I, again, I am a sinner. <laughs> I, am, I am nothing. He is everything. But when you get to see yourself, I see myself sometimes just like walking around like, who is that girl? Because I catch a glimpse of who I was before him. And um, there's so many uh, advantages <laughs> to uh, living your life for the Lord. But if that was just it, just to know that I'm alive now and I get to say that and I get to show people that, um, probably when it gets down to the root of it all, that would be the main reason, you know, obviously just for people to know that they are also alive in Christ and the freedom that that gives, um, that that was, you were not meant um, for chaos or for death or doom or destruction. You were made uh, to be holy and to be righteous uh, with Christ. Um, and then, of course, it has developed throughout the years. Um, just this morning, I'm walking in here this morning just shaking my head as they're rehearsing. It looks like I'm upset. Um, <laughs> But I'm just like, what in the world? Like, how do I thank you, Jesus, that I continue to be able to be used? And I'm sure there's lots of things that they've learned for me not to do. Um, but it's just amazing to be able to be with this, uh, this beautiful serve team of fellas and gals um, and watch them just in their own way uh, come undone before the Lord and... and um, yeah, that's that's a a, a big other reason it. why I do it. <laughs> One more thing, like I think there's something that you and I constantly text each other back and forth is how do we get to do this? Yeah. Mm. You know, it's it's not that there's anything special about us. Make we sure, just just making sure you're still home. <laughs> <laughs> get to do this. I love it. Take down that crown. You know? Well, hey, can we just thank him hey. for for the time um, and for your service? Listen, I want I want you to know this. There was a moment in in the life of our ministry where it was very like a performance driven thing and it was very like we have to be as perfect as we can be as excellent as we can you know the product that you receive we want it to be sp spotless and polished and perfected and and uh, it it became kind of a, a hindrance to us because we were about checking the box and making sure that you guys had a good experience rather than worshiping the lord does that make sense and uh, I, can, I can attest, and the reason I say that what you see happen on stage is what these people live in their real life, it's because they're not doing anything for you. They are not. It has nothing to do with you at all. It has to do with the fact that they are worshiping the Lord. And, and they're going to do that the same here as they would by themselves, on their own. And, and honestly, that's a benefit to you. Because you can follow that. You can receive that. You can say, if that person is free enough to do that in front of me, then I can do that right here or on my own or whatever it is. And it's, it's let me just tell you, not every church is like that. Um, I, want, I want you to know a couple things in the two and a half, one and a half minutes that I have to preach this. Um, what, what is worship? Worship is simply vocalizing the worth of God in my life. It's a value-based thing. God is worth something to me, and so I'm going to attest that to him, um, not as a purpose, but as a benefit. Worship is a realignment of our mind, body, and soul. Does that make sense? When you entrench yourself in worship, you realign your life to the fact that, oh my goodness, why do I get to do this, right? Same response. And honestly, I think the problem is, is that we, some people miss that realignment because... Um, you haven't actually entrenched yourself in worship. You haven't let it go. And, and I want to read you a couple things. The reason that we kind of pared this all down to singing in worship today is because it's biblical. There are so many aspects and elements of worship that are found in the Word of God. We could talk about worship through giving today. We could talk about worship through being here. We could talk about worship through growing in your own personal walk with God. But we wanted to specifically talk about worship through God in singing because it's biblical. Psalm 95 says this. This is the message translation. He says, come, let us shout praises to God. Raise the roof for the rock who saved us. Let's march into his presence singing praises. Lift the rafters with our heads. And why? Why do we do this? And honestly, in that moment, you would almost think it's because of something that God did to us. 
This is why it's about me. No, it's not about you. Because God is the best high king over all the gods. In one hand, he holds deep caves and caverns. In the other hand, he grasps the high mountain. He made the oceans. He owns it. His hand sculpted earth. So come, let's worship. Bow down before him on your knees before God who made us. So yes, he's our God and we are his people. The people he pastures, the flock he feeds. And, and then it goes on to a couple other scenarios, examples from the past. But we worship through key, singing because we owe it to God. There has to be some kind of response from our hearts. Um, I think, you know, in our consumeristic American mentality, we have to almost be convinced of why we should. Why should I do this? Why should I, why should I open my mouth? Why should I sing those words? I mean, I'll be honest with you. There's a great number of you who just stand. And, and I honestly, Crystal and I have this conversation every once in a while. We're like, how do, how do people do that? How do you not engage in worship? I can't even, I can't understand it. I cannot get my mind to just fathom the idea of just standing. And, and maybe, maybe there's an element of worship that's going on inside of you that's just erupting in some other way. I, I don't know. I can't speak for why some people worship in the way that you do. I'm not going to I'm not going to attack that because not all worship needs to be the same. It doesn't. It cannot. Your personalities are unique unique and innately different. So your worship cannot be the same. It will not be the same. But what I'm saying is is that if you're holding back and you're not going to open your mouth and give worth to God through your voice, you're missing something. And maybe it's because there's a misunderstanding. I, I wrote down kind of four things. Uh, and, and these are maybe some beliefs that you've wrestled with that you have right now or, or whatever. But number one, I just don't believe it. I don't believe what you're doing. I don't believe that what's happening right now is that I should be involved with it. I don't believe it. The second thing is maybe that I just don't understand it. And, and you know what? It's fine to not understand. It's just not fine to stay that way. Because in... Indifference is, is uh, at one point, it's your problem. Does that make sense? You got to own it. You, you have all freedom and access to the life-changing message of the Word of God. If you don't understand it, that's your fault. Does that make sense? Because as soon as you begin to ingest and understand the fact that you were a sinner and He was a Savior and He came and allowed Himself to be nailed on a cross for you, the only response is an outpour of worship. The only response. And you've got to own it and understand it. So I don't understand it. The third one, my favorite, it's just not my style. Really? Listen, I get the fact that there are a thousand different styles of worship. But even in saying that, aren't you not immediately saying that this is about me? And number four, I just don't care. I'm just not going to worship because I don't care. And, and I think there's a specific, a specific response for a person who's going to attest to that too. And I think you'll figure that out here through this course of this little talk I've got to finish up now. I, I love what uh, I sat down and I, I consulted with our, 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 uh, one of our worship pastors, Chris Klug, who leads worship at our Chambers for Campus. I also interviewed Andrea a little bit as we talked on Tuesday about what, what this was going to be. And, and uh, Chris had some really good written thoughts about this. And I, so I just wanted to give you this. Um, and I don't know if this is innate to him. He created it or if he stole it from somebody else. But his, his thing is this, is that worship is or worship equals love plus lordship, plus expression. Make sense? Love in your heart, plus the identity or the realization that God, Jesus Christ, is Lord, plus an expression. There's got to be some form of expression here. That is worship, okay? So how does that, for, how does that break down? Love, listen to this. This is, this is really good. He says, love without lordship is empty emotionalism. And we've felt some of that before. Love without lordship is empty emotionalism. Lordship without love is legalism. And some of you have lived in that church. I grew up there. 
I'm still recovering. <laughs> and then this one, expression without lordship, buckle up, is hypocrisy. Because the reality is this, you all are worshipers all the time. It's either in the direction of God or somewhere else. But you are a worshiper. You are an evangelist too. And when your evangelism and your worship coincide, it, it should point to Christ. It should always point in the direction of Christ. Let me give you a few verses just, just quickly. 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Love, right? Lordship. I, I want to read this one to you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. Sorry, I didn't look this up in my Bible beforehand. I'm kind of lost here. This is, this is Paul. Okay, from the message translation again. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the dead, set him on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name, no power exempt from his rule, not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all has final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he fills everything with his presence. That is lordship. That is us acknowledging the fact that he is ruler of all, creator of all, and in charge of all. That's what that is. And honestly, if, you're, if your worship doesn't include that understanding, it's no wonder you don't feel it. You're not convinced of it. You're not convinced that he's the Lord of all. Expression. Expression is the posture of worship. Worship, will, worship, understand this, worship will always cost you something. You do not ever get to express God in worship for free. Now, here's the problem. You and I immediately, as soon as I say the word free and cost, your mind races towards financial. And you're like, it didn't cost me anything to get here this morning. That's because that might not be the cost. And honestly, this is why some people worship like this. Because you're refusing for it to cost you anything. The cost can be your dignity. Let me just point it out to you like this. That, that's biblical. Second Samuel chapter 24, right? No, Second Samuel chapter 6. David became undignified in worship. And people came to him and accused him of looking like a fool. They didn't want to be around him because they're like, what are you doing? And he attested, I'm just entrenched in worship. 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 1, Andrea reminded me of this one the other day when I talked to her about it. She said, Hannah, Hannah came to the, to the temple to pray and be involved in worship. And honestly, the, the priest that was there, Eli, accused her of being drunk because he's like, you, what, like who, who are you? What are you doing? And she's like, I'm just desperate. I'm desperate for the Lord. And when, when, when your desperation and expression meet, it looks a little weird. In fact, right after this, I have the, the words, the ugly cry, written. Have you ever seen somebody do the ugly cry? <laughs> have you ever done the ugly cry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like, it's like you lose all control of yourself in that moment. What would it look like if our church just lost control when it came to worship? Another one that I have written down here is 2 Samuel chapter 24, where David goes and he, ha he buys a field and s performs a sacrifice on this field in an act of worship. And he says, you know, the, the owner of the field was like, no, you can't, you can't buy this. I've got too much honor for you. I'll just give it to you. I'll donate it to you. And David says, no, it has to cost me something. We cannot do this for free. And I'll be honest with you, so, ma so many of Christ followers today are guilty of free worship. It doesn't cost you anything. It hasn't cost you anything in a long time. 
And, and I'll be honest with you. Let, let me read you one more verse. Hebrews 13, 15 says this. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. That is true worship. The word sacrifice literally means to surrender, give up, permanent injury, a disadvantage to, for the sake of something else. In other words, it's going to cost you. You're giving up something for the sake of someone else. That's true worship. And I want to wrap this up with two things. Psalm 96 and a statement slash question. If the thought of who Christ is and what he has done does not produce in you an expression of worship, I have to ask, do you actually know who he is? Like, are you convinced that you know Christ? Because if you know Christ, the very thought of him should result in worship. Do you actually believe in him? Do you actually understand the extent of your depraved condition in connection to his sovereignty and grace? We were talking about this. I can't remember where I was having this conversation. But you've heard the term, we are sinners saved by grace. You've heard that term before. Do you realize that every day of your life, you are a sinner saved by grace? Every day. It's not the fact that I was once a sinner and now I'm saved. No, you're being saved every day. You're being rescued every single day. Because no matter what your intent, no matter what your drive, no matter what your purpose in life, you are still a sinner. The very core of who you are still wanders towards sin. Every time. And shouldn't that fact alone, that Christ doesn't just throw up his hands and say, I give up, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. They're never going to get it right. No, the love just continues. It just continues to be poured out. It just conti- The forgiveness is constant and unending and always there and always real and always right. Psalm 96. Sing God or sing to God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it sing, sing to God, worship God. Do you get the fact that this is about your voice, open your mouth, singing? It's pretty clear. Shout the news of his victory from sea to sea. Take the news of his glory to the lost. News of his wonders to one and all. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs, which is why that's all we'll do when we get to heaven. His terrible beauty makes other gods look cheap. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. Bravo, God, bravo. Everyone joins in the great shout. Encore in awe before the beauty, in awe before the might. Bring gifts and celebrate. Bow before the beauty of God. Then to your knees, everyone worship. Get out the message, God rules. He put the world on a firm foundation. He treats everyone with fairness. Let, let's hear it from sky with earth joining in. A huge round of applause from the sea. Let wilderness turn cartwheels, animals dance. Put every tree in the forest in a choir. A, an extravag- extravaganza before God as he comes. As he comes to set everything right on earth. Set everything right and treat everyone with fairness. That is why we worship. Listen, I want to just give you a moment with your, just, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed to just come before the Lord and evaluate your own worship. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Every time I just consider a thought like this, my mind has to race to God, forgive me for not worshiping you the way that you were. 
I'm not sure that we can ever fully do this right, but I don't think that matters. What matters is that we understand who God is, what he's done, and that our response is expression. That he loves us. That he's Lord over all. And when we understand that, we cry out in worship. I wrote down just a few thoughts, a few prayers that I would pray. God, wake up my worship. Wake up my worship, God. God, forgive me for trying to make worship about me. Because it's not my style. Because I don't feel it. Because they take too long. Because it's too repetitive. Because I don't like that song. Maybe a question. Maybe you need to ask a question. God, where have I become indifferent? Where have I become indifferent about worship? And then a, a request. God, help me to be intentional because it's your job. Help me to be intentional about remembering and learning your love. Maybe you just haven't learned it. Maybe for you, the extent of your knowledge and your your relationship with Christ only happens on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., 9 to 10, 20 a.m. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than just what I tell you, what I encourage you with. It's got to be yours. Just take a minute right now, just you and God. I think the other reality is today is you're just still right there in the throne of grace. Just put yourself right there in front of the Lord. The, the awesome reality, the astounding reality is that in a message like this, it just clearly points to the fact that Jesus is Savior, and that he came to this earth to die on a cross for you. And it's uh, honestly, it's my prayer through this whole, this whole series, this whole moment, through this whole unveiling of who we are as a church and what we believe, that you would come to a saving knowledge of that grace that you would recognize the fact that you can't earn his salvation. It's got to be come through a gift. It's got to come through you receiving a gift. It's you understanding that I am a sinner and that I need a savior. And I fully believe that the spirit of God will work in your heart to understand that today. If that's your story, if that's what we walked in today, I want to help you understand the truth. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, 9 through 13, that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you would be saved. Do you need to make that decision today? Is that the moment? Is this the moment that you need to understand the beginning of 2021 that I'm a sinner, Jesus came, died on a cross to pay for my sins, and I need to accept that today? If that's your story, listen, let me just help you clearly understand this. Paul made it super simple. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. So if that's your story, if you believe that in your heart, then let's pray it. God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on a cross to pay for my sins because I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I accept your gift of salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if that's what you did today, we're just going to tell you what to do. Hey, Kevin. Thank you. Andrew, Amanda, thank you. Um, Whether you know it or not, whether you understand it or not, You were created to worship. You were created for that. And whether we worship him or we worship whatever, you know, in in the song part of it, you know, God's word says that as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. That's what it says. In Zephaniah, it says that he rejoices over you with singing. Do you think that that was a seed? Do you think that was a seed that he planted? We worship because he loves us. He loved us first. First. I didn't deserve it. It said, well, I was still yet a sinner. He died for me. While I was still yet a sinner, he died for me. Like, I don't know where you're at today. Really don't know. I mean, you're, you're here in Shippensburg. But that don't mean you're here. So wherever you're at today, not in a physical location, but in a spiritual location, 
Like just surrender. Just surrender it to him. And just allow him to be the king of kings and lord of lords. If that is you today, like I invite you to go over and see Paige. Like go to the hub. Or anybody with a lanyard, like find them. We want to help you. We want to walk with you to make your next steps with Jesus. We want to partner with you. Father, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for worship. God, we thank you that it is not something that is superficial, but it is intimate and it is deep, God. And God, we want to go there. We want to go there, God. So, Father, as we go today, Lord God, we just ask, Father, that you would, uh, we thank you that you go with us, that you empower us, that you teach us about worship, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Go be a blessing. See you next week.